Video 6 Understanding Solar Electricity Although widespread interest in solar electricity is fairly recent, the technology owes its origin to its researchers in the 1800s, who found that light could move electrons in solid materials. This truly fascinating discovery led to the development of several types of solar cells that are in use today. In this video, we'll take a peek inside solar cells and how they work. We also examine the type of modules that are on the market today and introduce you to some of the important terms and concepts. What is a PV cell? Photovoltaic cells are solid state electronic devices like transistors, diodes and other components of modern electronic equipment. These devices are referred to as solid state because electrons flow through solid materials within them. Most solar cells in use today are made from one of the most abundant materials on the planet, that is the silicon, which is extracted from quartz and sand. Like all atoms, silicon atoms contain electrons that orbit around a central nucleus that contains protons and neutrons. Most solar cells in use today are thin wafers of silicon, about one hundredth of an inch thick. Most solar cells consist of two layers, a very thin upper layer, a much thicker lower layer. The upper layer is made up of silicon and phosphorus atoms. The bottom layer is made of silicon and boron atoms. When sunlight strikes the silicon atoms in solar cells, it jams the electrons out of the atoms in both the layers. These electrons flow into the metal contacts located on the front of the solar cells. Numerous solar cells are wired in series in a solar module. Because of this, electrons extracted from one cell flow the, to the next cell and then to the next cell, etc until they reach the negative terminal of the module electrons flow from the array through wires connected to the house to power a load after delivering the energy gained from the sunlight to the load the de-energized electrons return through a different wire to the array types of pv cells Solar cells can be made from a variety of semiconductor materials. By far the most common is silicon. As noted earlier, silicon is provided, produced from silicon dioxide, which is derived from two sources, quartzite and silica sand. Quartzite is a rock made entirely of the mineral quartz which in turn consists of nearly pure silica. Silica sand is relatively pure sand containing a high percentage of silica. Geologically, silica sand is derived from quartz. Silicon dominates the semiconductor market even though there are other materials that efficiently convert sunlight to electricity because silicon semiconductor produce the most electricity at the lowest cost. Three forms of silicon are used to make solar modules. Monocrystalline, polycrystalline and amorphous thin film. Monocrystalline PVs. Monocrystalline cells aka single crystal cells were the first commercially manufactured solar cells. They are made from wafers slide, sliced from a single large cylindrical manufactured crystal of silicon. Single crystal ingots are made by melting highly purified chunks of polycrystalline and a trace amount of boron. Monocrystalline cells boast 
the highest efficiency of all conventional PV cells, around 15%. Efficiencies vary from one manufacturer to the next, ranging from 14% to 17%. Polycrystalline PV cells Polycrystalline solar cells are made from silicon with a trace of boron just like monocrystalline cells. To make a polycrystalline cell, however, the molten material is poured into a square or rectangular mold. It is then allowed to cool very slowly. As the ingot cools, many small crystals form internally. Once cooled, the cast ingot is removed from the mold, then sliced using a diamond wire saw, creating wafers used to fabricate solar cells. Polycrystalline solar cells are only about 12% efficient. Their efficiency varies from one manufacturer to the next, ranging from 11.5% to 14%. Although polycrystalline cells are less efficient, they require less energy to produce. Because of this, they are a bit cheaper to manufacture. Energy Payback of PVs You might have heard people say that it takes more energy to make a PV system than you get out of it over its lifetime. Fortunately, that's not even close to being accurate. While it takes energy to make solar cells, modules and the remaining equipment of a PV system, the energy payback is actually amazingly short, only one to two, two years. According to a study released by Crystal Clear, a research and development project on advanced industrial crystalline silicon PV technology, funded by the consortium of European PV manufacturers, given that a PV system will continue to produce electricity for 30 years or more, a PV system's lifetime production will far exceed the energy it took to produce it or manufacture it. Thin Film Technology In an effort to produce solar modules at a lower cost, which means using less energy and less material, several manufacturers have turned to a new technology known as thin film. Unlike manufacturers of previous technologies, thin film producers manufacture entire modules rather than individual cells that must be wired into series to create modules. Skipping the step of assembling cells into modules saves energy, time and money. Efforts are being made to increase the efficiency of this promising technology. By carefully selecting the semiconductors, manufacturers can create solar modules that absorb much more of the solar spectrum. The result is a more efficient PV cell, one that converts more of the sun's energy into electricity. Advantages of Thin Film Technology Thin film technology offers several advantages over single and polycrystalline solar cells. One of the most important is that their production uses considerably less energy by eliminating the costly and energy incentive intensive ingot production and wafer slicing required in manufacturing a mono and polycrystalline PV cells. Another advantage is that it uses less material. Right. This ends video 6, Understanding Solar Electricity.